like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8, a channel devoted to the history of college football. New videos drop twice a week. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. In 1998, the Chicago Cubs had done it. For the first time since 1989, and for just the third time in the last 50 years, they were going to be playing playoff baseball as they ended the season with a 90 and 73 record, finishing second in the NL Central and winning the wild card. And while there were many reasons for the success of the team, with the obvious most notable one being Sammy Sosa hitting an incredible 66 home runs during his iconic home run chase against Mark McGuire, there was one pitcher on the team who was also taking the baseball world by storm. And that was none other than this guy right here, the man you've been watching this whole time, rookie pitcher Kerry Wood. After being drafted out of high school with a fourth overall pick in the 1995 MLB draft, by 1998, at the age of 20, he was already in the majors, projected to be a possible ace. However, no one, and I truly mean no one, could have seen just how successful he would be right off the bat. In just his fifth start, not only did he shout out the Astros 2-0 by throwing a complete game and allowing just one hit, but he struck out 20 batters, becoming the first player in National League history to ever accomplish this feat. Some call it the greatest pitching performance of all time. He struck out 233 batters in just over 166 innings of work, finishing third in the NL in that category and finishing first in the NL by allowing just 6.3 hits per nine innings and by striking out 12.6 batters per nine. And while it was a close battle for NL Rookie of the Year, since Todd Helen had an incredible season with the Colorado Rockies, when all was said and done, for his efforts, Wood was named the NL Rookie of the Year, becoming just the fourth Cub to ever win this award, and becoming the first and to date only pitcher in Cubs history to win this honor. As a side note, to learn more about how voting for NL Rookie of the Year works, click the card in the upper right corner. Kerry Wood, after just one year, was one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. And when you think of one, you probably think of that iconic 20 strikeout performance against the Astros. However, what you might not know is how he followed up that performance a week later against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Because after another great outing, instead of being the hero, this time, he was the GOAT. Because of something that he said after the game that was in incredibly poor taste and made him seem incredibly cocky and disrespectful. Except, he never said it. The media lied. It's a truly bizarre story between the Chicago Cubs and USA Today that we're going to dive into today. Because this is the story behind what has to be the strangest controversy of Kerry Wood's career and the bizarre feud between the Cubs and a national newspaper. Before I talk about the controversy in question and what exactly was said, we need some context to understand the game in question and how it was going. It's May 11th, 1998, and we've got a battle in the National League down at Bank One Ballpark in the desert in Arizona between the Chicago Cubs and the expansion Arizona Diamondbacks. And the major storyline was just what the heck Kerry Wood could possibly do for an encore. Two starts ago, he won seven innings and allowed just one early run in an 8-3 win against the St. Louis Cardinals. In his last start back on May 6th, he made history by throwing 20 strikeouts. Now, you're going up against the worst team in baseball. You're going up against a team that is 8-28, an expansion team, and a team that has scored just 126 runs all season, or 3.5 per game, which was the second worst total in baseball, only ahead of the Montreal Expos. You're going up against a team that has not only lost five straight, but has scored a grand total of 12 runs across those five games, and has looked anemic with the bats, going 10 straight games without scoring more than four runs. On paper, this was set up to be a cakewalk for Wood, 
and was looking like it had all the makings of another absolutely dominant performance. And sure enough, it was. Was it the 20 strikeout game that he had against the Astros? Absolutely not. But it was still a great game where he thoroughly dominated. It's almost like the Astros game was Finding Nemo, as in one of the greatest animated movies of all time, and a near flawless film. And this game was Finding Dory, as in a movie that was nowhere close to as good, but let's be honest, no one expected that. And it was still an enjoyable film and a very worthy successor. Wood wins seven innings and allowed just five hits, one walk, and 13 strikeouts. At one point in the contest, Wood retired 15 straight batters. He struck out the side in the fifth inning, and he had a stretch from the bottom of the fourth through the start of the seventh, where out of eight batters, seven of them went down on strikes. The Cubs won this game 4 to 2, and with the exception of a somewhat shaky seventh inning, when he was over 100 pitches and allowed three base runners, Wood was nearly flawless, even setting the MLB record for most strikeouts in consecutive games having struck out 33 batters across his last two outings. Having said that, he did allow a run, and we need to talk about that run. Because in the bottom of the seventh, with one out, and on pitch number three of the at-bat to Kelly Stinnett with a 1-1 count, this happened. He's got service called for a lot of breaking balls. High drive, deep left field. At the wall is Miski. Shocking. It was like a glitch in the matrix based on the way Wood had been pitching. No one saw this home run coming whatsoever, but Wood just threw a fastball over the plate, and Kelly Stinnett, to his credit, took advantage of it with a drive to deep left field in a 4 0 ballgame. Now, Stinnett was not exactly a great player by any means. In his first four seasons, he only had six home runs so he was not one to get a ton of power behind his swings. He hit just 226 in his first four seasons, including an abysmal stint in 1996 with the Milwaukee Brewers, where he hit just 077 and struck out 11 times on just two hits. And to start off this 1998 season in Arizona, he was playing really poorly and was part of the problem in terms of the Diamondbacks having an anemic offense as he hitches 231 entering this game, including four straight games with a strikeout. This was Stinnett's first at-bat of the game after coming in during the fifth inning. And man did he deliver, getting a home run off of the hottest pitcher in baseball in Kerry Wood, completely out of nowhere. And after the game, Wood was asked about that home run, which really was the one blemish that he had. As for what Wood had to say on it, he said, Every blind squirrel finds a nut sometimes. Now hang on a second. That seems like an incredibly horrible, and quite frankly, classless comment to me. A guy hit a home run off of you, and your response is to essentially say that he's not that good, but even not so good players do good things every now and then? You've played less than a month in the majors, and while you've been amazing thus far, and obviously there is no denying that. You're going to talk about a player on the opposing team who you don't know, who has been in the big leagues for quite some time, and completely discredit him and his accomplishment? Way to make people root against you, Kerry. You just went from the lovable rookie to an extremely cocky player who was a lot harder to root for. If he was just going to be a poor sport, anytime anyone ever got a hit off of him and did something well. This comment was in extremely poor taste, and I think that goes without saying. And it sort of came out of nowhere, seeing as one of the things that Wood was known for was his maturity at such a young age, and how he handled business on the mound. Said Cubs closer Rod Beck after the game on Wood. First and foremost, he's a great kid who appreciates the game, and goes about things in a classy way. I don't think I'd ever wanted to root for a kid more than him. Yeah, that's classy, all right. So classy to the rate a player who just hit a home run against you and call him a blind squirrel, saying that he got lucky. That quote was printed all over USA Today after the game, 
that Carrie Wu was a poor sport, a sore loser, and was openly willing to criticize batters on the opposing team if he didn't feel that they were very good, like Kelly Stinnett. Which is why it's going to come as a shock to you that, as it turns out, Wood never said that. Yep. Turns out, those words, which were extremely classless and rude and made Wood out to be a cocky you-know-what, were never said. I shouldn't say that. They were said. But they weren't said by him. Rather, they were said by none other than Kelly Stinnett, who was referring to himself and said, Even a blind squirrel finds a nut sometimes. He threw me one fastball in the dirt, and I told myself just to get Barrel out. That's right. The comment about the blind squirrel finding a nut was said by the player who hit the home run as a compliment to Wood and almost some self-deprecation to himself. The quote takes on a completely different meaning because of this misattribution. It's almost like how if you're at work and you make a minor mistake on an email and you say, we really should fire whoever made that mistake and how that takes on a completely different meaning if the boss is the one saying those exact words. Like that's a pretty, pretty big thing to screw up. How do you screw up who said the quote? It's not even like you can mishear one person saying that, since the Cubs and Diamondbacks were in separate locker rooms. How could you get the team wrong? Stinnett saying that about himself, a guy who never hits home runs and is not known whatsoever for his power, is completely different than Wood saying that about Stinnett. One is a good bit of self-deprecation and admiration toward how good the opponent is. The other is being a poor sport. And it was so unlike Wood, who said a few days later, I don't like being on the front page of the paper. I don't like being on TV. I just like to be forgotten about, and even turned down requests to appear on late night television on Jay Leno and David Letterman. So it really would have been out of character for Wood to say something like that. So when the Cubs and Kerry Wood saw this quote in the paper attributed to him, oh, you can bet that they were furious about how the newspaper could get that quote so wrong. Not only did it make Wood look like a villain and like a cocky player who hated Kelly Stinnett for some reason, making it one of the strangest rivalries in baseball, but it was also, simply put, not true. So they immediately contacted USA Today, lashed out at them, and sought a correction to let people know that no, Wood was not that kind of guy. And no, Wood did not say any of those comments. But by this point, the damage in many people's eyes had been done. People read the papers and saw that quote front and center, and might not have read the papers the next day, or saw the blur for the correction, and made up their minds on just what kind of guy and character Kerry Wood was. Even though the information was completely false, and even though this opinion was based on some bad misinformation. So this should go without saying, but if you are a reporter and you are interviewing someone, perhaps the number one rule before anything else is to properly attribute the quote to the person you are interviewing. If you're interviewing a player on the Diamondbacks, then make sure that in the paper you properly spell their name and lay out that player and make sure that this player is on the Diamondbacks, and not on the opposing team. If you don't do that, then not only are you spreading misinformation through your own carelessness, but you are not properly doing your job. Because in 1998, it seemed that the only thing that could stop Kerry Wood wasn't a batter on the opposing team, but rather, of all things, a so-called journalist. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.